So I'm going to get started. I had this interview last week. I was on somebody else's podcast and um, they interviewed me. And it's crazy because when they interviewed me, they started off with all of the different accolades, all of the different things I had done in my life. And the guy was like, yo, Sean, I almost don't even know where to start. We got a legend in the building. You know, my man, Sean Prez, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So the interview was dope. And we came toward the end of the interview and he asked me a question that I thought was a dope question. He was like, yo, Prez, you know, you just went through your journey. You went through your career, but you've done so much. What is it that motivates you now? Like, like what wakes you up in the morning? You've done so many things. Like, how do you still get motivated? And I told him, I said, yo, it's two things like to keep it a hundred. It's two things that to this second motivate me. Number one, I want to take all of my experience. I want to take all of my ups and my downs, my failures, all of the things I did right and things I did wrong. And I want to put it out there to the world. And I want to motivate somebody. I want to inspire somebody. I want to educate somebody so that they, no matter where they're at in their journey, they can look at Prez and say, yo, if he can do it, I can do it. I said the biggest compliment that I can ever get is if somebody I never ever meet becomes successful and one day they're saying, yo, it was because of Prez. He said something, he did something, he gave back in a way that just connected with me. And it just gave me that motivation. And then the dude started looking at me like, uh, you said it was two things. So I paused for a second and I said, yeah, Eric Thomas. And he looks at me like, maybe I ain't get this right. Like, you supposed to be a nice guy. You supposed to be out there inspiring. What do you mean? I said, you asked me what motivates me. I said, the second thing is Eric Thomas. And he was like, kind of gave me a look like, you know, I'm not taking this out the interview. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm telling you my truth. And my truth is he's number one and I want the throne, period. So this is what motivates me. And when he looked at me, it was almost like how, like, cause I'm thinking to myself, do you know the man? Are you related to him? Like, he's like, you got some audacity. Like, like how dare you put this man out there like that? And I looked back at him and I said, you asked me a question. I said, let's, let's look at it like this. I said, we're just coming off one of the most tumultuous year and a half in the history of the world. I said, COVID is just, we're just getting to the other side of it. People are just being able to go out and live life like normal. I said, in the US, we lost over 600,000 people. Globally, we lost 4 million. Do you think I got time to be politically correct? I don't know when God is going to call me home. I don't know when God is going to snatch this air from my body. I'm in gladiator mode. So this is what motivates me right now. I said, and if you don't understand that, there's a problem with you because too many people out there are confusing the difference between being alive and living. And I'm trying to live. We lost way too many people in the last year and a half for any of you, any of my movers to just try to be status quo, to just try to be average. Are you trying to live or are you comfortable being alive? Because they are two very different things. Do you understand that the only requirement, there's only one requirement to being alive and that's breathing. All you got to do is breathe and you alive. There's somebody right now, this second, who's on the respirator and can't breathe on their own. But technically, they're alive. It's somebody right now, this second, who's in a coma, who will never wake up again. But they're breathing. They're alive. There's somebody 
right now you might know them. They're over age, senior citizens, collecting social security, 70, 80, 90 years old. They're alive, but they never lived a day in their life. And movers, I'm telling y'all, it's time to live. It's time to stop setting goals that are just attainable. Stop setting goals that keep you within the status quo. Stop setting goals that don't allow you to break out from the pack. Get out there and live. And if you can't believe, because sometimes that's what it comes down to, is just believing in yourself. And trust me when I tell you, I've been down that road. I remember when I first made the decision to be a public speaker. I first said, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to motivate people. I'm going to inspire people. I went to my man, Eddie Lopez, who's probably in this live right now. And my man, Ed, for anybody who knows him, he's one of them kind of, ah, glasses half empty type dudes. Like, if you ever want to get your confidence knocked, go talk to him. But I knew if I talked to him and he gave me the green light, Sean, it's off to the races. So I said, Ed, this is what I'm thinking about doing. But I don't know if I measure up. I don't know if I got the accolades. I don't know if I've done enough in my life. So when people see me, they're inspired. And my man said, yo, Sean, are you crazy? I've been knowing you for 25 years. Anybody would look at you in your body of work. Look at you in your history before you even open your mouth and be inspired. But sometimes that faith and that believing you got to go outside of yourself and get it from somebody else. I remember when I was just starting this early in the game, when I made my decision to do it. And I'd be out with my girl and people would ask me, what is it that you do? And I would hit them with, well, I do marketing. Well, I own a marketing agency. And she would cut in each and every time and say, no, he's being humble. No, he's being respectful and gracious. He's a motivational speaker, but that, that, that belief, that belief that they had in me, I had to grab onto it until I started to believe, until I started claiming it. And I'm saying sometimes your dreams, your hopes, your desires, that thing that you want, the goals, it might be bigger than you. You got to get around people who don't see you the way that you see yourself. Because you could easily look at yourself and say, how can I achieve that? But other people who know you, who've been next to you, who rock with you, they see the greatness in you. And if you got to borrow some of that belief from them, then go get it. But I'm saying go out there and live. Because that's what it's all about. You got to wake up and snap out of this whole thing about, I'm just going to do just enough. I got to make my mark in this world. I got to live. I remember my man D-Dot, Derek Angeletti. And this guy, every time he see me, he used to be like, yo, Sean, what's up? How you doing? And I'll be like, yo, Derek, I'm good. I'm quiet. And he said, don't ever let me hear you say that again. Don't be quiet. Be a riot. Get out there and live. I was reading an article that came out a couple of years ago. And they said that the number one regret, the number one regret of people who are on their deathbed is not that they're leaving this world. It's not the family that they're leaving behind. It's not the things that they did that they got to apologize for. It's not all of the things that they did, good or bad. It's just the opposite. Most people who know their time is up, who are laying on that deathbed as we speak, their biggest regret is all the things they didn't do. All of the things that when they had the chance to do it, they was too, they was too afraid to just live. And I'm telling you, movers, get out there. Let today be the day that you change your thinking. Let today be the day that you change your mindset. It's time to live. Being alive ain't good enough. Breathing ain't good enough. What is the point of living a hundred years? If you never lived, what's the point of it? And as I sit 
and I think about names like Muhammad Ali, Bruce Lee, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Michael Jackson, and I could go on days and days. It's two things that they have in common. Number one, they ain't here no more. But number two, and what's most important, is that their name, their name when they were here, they lived to the max. They went after it. They wasn't scared of it. And their name has lived or outlived them. Their name. And it's levels to this, y'all. Yes, you can be alive. Yes, you can live. But then there's something called immortality. Those dudes are immortal. What is your purpose here on earth? What is your purpose? Are you trying to be immortal? Are you trying to do something that your name will outlive you? Because if you are, you got to jump out the window. And you got to do some things that other people say can't be done. I look at my man Muhammad Ali. When this dude was fighting, he fought Frazier three times in his prime. Immortal. He fought Foreman. Rumble in the jungle. In his prime. Immortal. Y'all know I'm a fight fan. I give it up to Floyd Mayweather all the time. 50 and 0. Yes, he's unbeaten. But when he fought De La Hoya, he was at the end of his career. When he fought Canelo Alvarez, he was at the beginning of his career. And when he fought Manny Pacquiao, it took five and a half years to make that fight. Neither one of them was in their prime anymore. And because of that, nobody talks about that fight. He'll go down in history, but he's not going down for fighting that fight. It's time to start thinking bigger. And when I think about that interviewer, when he was asking me, Sean, what motivates you? You damn right, coming for the crown motivates me. I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. I was asleep the other night, and I woke up in a cold sweat because it dawned on me. Like, and this is true story. It dawned on me. Sean, if you get Eric Thomas, if you get him, you got to get him in his prime. I don't know what, I know what fighters with athletes, their bodies decline after a certain amount of time. I don't know what happens to the voice and motivation. But with him, I'm looking at him like, yo, I want him in his prime. And if it takes me bodying, speaker after speaker after speaker after speaker to get to him, when we get the stage, as long as he is still doing what he's doing at a high level, that's what takes a person like me and makes me immortal for him it was going after tony robbins and so forth and so on so i'm saying dream bigger y'all don't be afraid to live don't be afraid to don't just exist because being alive is about existing i'm looking for immortality can any of you guys say you're doing anything more than just being alive don't ever, ever, ever settle for just existing. This life is good and it's here for the taking. Y'all are movers. Every single one of y'all are movers. Go out there, figure out who is standing in your way to be an immortal and become laser focused and obsessed on them. Become laser focused. You got to go through 30 different people who are in the way to get to that person, to that company, to that what you go through them. Because that's the difference that's going to take you from where you are today to when you're no longer breathing. Somebody is saying your name. Peace and love, movers. Hopefully y'all got something out of this quick message. We trying to be immortal. It ain't good enough. We ain't in here for no other reason but to do something that's going to outlive us.